everybody welcome back to the channel and welcome to a video on trigger control for the newbie the beginner airbrusher i'm going to take you through some little exercises that will help you out on your trigger control and this will be something that you can go back to just to sharpen up on and get your trigger accuracy down and trigger control it'll make it a lot better i always revert back to this that's why i'm doing another one of these videos there is one on the channel on this but I always like to come back to it because it's good to go back and sharpen up your skills and keep on top of your trigger control when you're an airbrusher. So the things that you're gonna to need to do this today with me is your airbrush. So hopefully you've got your airbrush sorted. I'm gonna be using the Iwata Revolution CR. This is a 0.5 mil, a good beginner's brush and for advanced airbrush artists, it's a good all-rounder. It will spray thicker paints nice and easy. You've got, it's a top cup airbrush, you get a cap to the top, double action, so down for air, back for paint. So that's the brush we're gonna be using today. I'll leave a link in the description where you can pick these brushes up from. They're really good guys, and it'll be, the link is for all the parts as well, you'll see it on the link, you can get all your eye water stuff there. So good site to look at guys. So the other things that you're gonna need is paper. Now, when you're practicing, you don't need to go out and buy special canvases for airbrushing on or certain pads that are like 20, 30 pound for a pad of paper. Them sort of things come later on when you've got your skills down and you start doing your pictures you start buying better paints and you start buying better paper today's paper is basically a roll of cheap very cheap craft paper now if you're based in the uk you would have heard of places like the works b m the range places like that you can pick up rolls of paper like this or even if you go to somewhere like wilco's you can buy backing paper, which is wallpaper backing paper. That's really good for practicing on, and you get the big rolls. They're cheap, they come in at around three, three, four pounds, but that's, you've got like a 50 meter roll, which is like 600 mil wide. So really good for practicing on. You can just tear a piece off, stick it to your easel, and you're good to go. So price on this was two pounds for about 25 meters. So that's the paper. Paint, as I say, you do not need to be using specialist airbrush paint. You don't need to be going out buying Wicked, Createx, Golden at the minute, all your fancy paints, not for when you're practicing. You don't want to be, because an airbrush paint in a bottle this size will cost you seven to eight pounds, and you could burn through a bottle like that in two or three, four hours of airbrushing if you're hammering the paint down and you're throwing eight, eight pound away when you can get a thick acrylic like that for £1.60 and that will probably make you half a litre of paint which will last you a long time. So the ones I'm using today is Hobbycraft. I've got some diluted down with just normal water guys. You can use tap water with acrylics. I've got uh, distilled water in this bottle here. You can buy five litres distilled water, nice and cheap. So that's how I mix my paints. We've got some more Hobbycraft ones here. This paint that I've got here, I used on a project with this airbrush. I'll pop a little video up in the screen. It is on the channel, guys, on this piece of artwork that I did. But I used this Hobbycraft paint here, and it works an absolute treat. It worked brilliant on the wall. I was using um, this paint with that brush, and the actual wall was painted in basically a magnolia, a matte finish and the paint adhered to it absolutely fine. So that's a really good paint. 50-50 mix with this Hobbycraft one works really well. So that's the paint sorted. Other things that you're gonna need, you can use these. I tend not to use these. I'll use them if I'm doing a one-to-one -one course. You can get these little airbrush pots. Simple pot like that. It's got a stand to the front so your brush would sit in it like that and you can put your nozzle in and you can just clean your airbrush out. Little cleaning pots. They're handy to have, so I recommend one of them if you're working indoors and you've not got any extraction. These are good for blasting through your paint. Cheap, I'll leave a link. As again, the link will have these on the site where you can pick these up from. So they're handy to have. 
Other things is a ruler, so cheap. Raid your kids' pencil case if you've got children, just pinch the ruler. A sharpie, nice and cheap, and a basic pencil. So they're the bits you will need to do today's project, guys. So what I'll do is I'll move the camera in, we'll get the airline set up, and then I'll talk you through what's on this piece of paper here. See you in a minute. Hopefully that's picking it up and it's not too much glare from this side. It's hard to sit in front of an easel and have a camera just here. But as you can see, we have got some lines, some basic squares drawn out. You can do these any size you want and you can make these smaller if you need to. But I'd go about like centimeter squares like that, nice and simple, with a sharpet and with your ruler. And then we've got some lines coming down here, just straight lines. These are about two to three inches apart, like that. And then further down on the bottom, we've got the lines again this way they're about two inches distance in between so the first thing you need to be doing is to get trigger control is you've obviously had a play with your airbrush so you know how it works but if you're completely novice and it's the first time picking up your airbrush you drop your paint in the cup at the top put your lid on so you don't spill any Get your air pressure up to about 20, 25 PSI and you will press down and you get your air out of your brush like that. So you can feel the air coming out the front of the brush like that. And then the minute you start to pull back that trigger, the paint, as you can see, starts to come out. So it's down for air and then start moving back and then you get your paint out. So I'll do a bit to the side, down for air, move back with the paint, keep your air on at all times, just move back and you'll see your paint coming out. So that's basically how an airbrush works. And what we've got to do is we've got to get your trigger control dialed in so you're basically not doing this and causing runs, loads of paint coming out, you're just getting that trigger control dialed in so you know down for air you move your finger back and you're rocking your finger and moving that trigger the more back you move it the more paint the the little you move it the less paint so the more back more paint move it back slightly a lot less so that's what we're aiming for today is trigger control so we're going to move up to these grids and basically your first thing you need to learn is dots everybody needs to learn dots so aim your brush about two two to three centimeters away and you're aiming to put a dot in the center of these squares so nice and simple you're moving back down for air and you're moving back on your trigger keep your air on and you're basically rocking it back backwards and like that and forwards, backwards and forwards, like that, but keeping your air on. So back, keep your air on, move it forward, back. You're basically doing this. See the dots? See the trigger movement in my finger? And that's what you're creating, then dots like that. So carry on doing that. And just get a feel of the brush. It doesn't matter if you're doing a big dot. Just keep the distance about two centimeters away from the paper and work your way along, practicing getting dots in the centers of them boxes like that. Nice and simple. If you have to practice that over and over and over again, it will hold you in good stead, guys when you are painting further down the line because you always need a dot or you are always going to need a line, a dot, a shape in a piece of artwork. Artwork is made up of shapes and basically if you can paint the shapes you can get your artwork down. So it's as simple as that. So we'll carry on with the dots like that and then eventually you'll start getting faster and you will be like yep yeah, can do the dots and you will fill the squares like that of dots, nice and simple. 
and you can see the finger moving how fast I'm moving on that now I know exactly when that paint's coming out I know how far to pull it back to get that size dot consistently so you've got your first pass on your dots I'm going to take the crown cap off this just give the needle a little clean the next line of dots you need to hit the crosshairs so a little bit more concentration aim for the same size dot if you're comfortable at that and you're aiming for the crosshairs in between so you're doing the same size dot but you are now aiming to hit that crosshair in between there and what this will do is this will get you your trigger control down to the size of dot again but this will make you start to aim your airbrush and you'll know when you're coming on a piece of artwork you'll know exactly where to pinpoint your brush when you're doing a piece of art so say you're going in on an eye and you need to put a highlight dot you know exactly this will get your aiming skill so it'll get you aiming your brush accurately so aim for all the crosshairs like that with your dots and just work your way along if you have to do pages and pages and pages of dots so be it these trigger control things that we're doing here they will hold you in good stead guys they really will and it'll get that muscle memory in your finger you'll be able to pick the brush up and you know exactly how far to pull it back to get a dot you'll know exactly where to position the airbrush to hit them crosshairs so nice and simple like that and you'll get faster at it you can start making your boxes bigger or smaller whatever suits you so that's the first little exercise dots it's always a good one to go back in on now the next one is it's basically a dagger stroke or a line it's control in your air and your paint so if you look at this piece here we've got the air on so you'd start here like that with your air on and then when you move across you keep your air on bring your paint on like you did with the dot so you're pulling back you get your paint on you move along with your air and paint on and then you will rock your trigger forward keeping your air down so you keep your air on like that you'll bring your trigger back at the start of the line so you're bringing your paint and then when you come to the end here you're bringing your trigger forward but keeping your air on so it's like something like this you'll go like that like that and you'll create a line don't worry about that bit or that bit you'll basically just air on bring your paint in take your paint off rock it forward now do it sideways there you'll see the trigger movement like that and then you're rocking it forward if I go backwards that way paint take it off coming this way paint take it off paint take it off paint on take the paint off paint on take the paint off and you're just getting that movement of down putting the paint on taking the paint off and that will create a line now if you practice that along these going along going along like that don't worry about the points to get a nice dagger stroke you will get crisp softened out points either side what we're aiming for today is it's basically trigger control so you know how to move your finger to get your paint coming out and taking your paint off get it in between them lines and this will get your you can do smaller lines wider lines it just gets that memory in your finger to go right paint take the paint off there paint paint off there and you can see if I get my thumb out of the way try and do it like this like that you see that movement and you can see that trigger moving and then eventually you'll get faster at it now the faster you move at this 
I'll do a longer line there. When you start moving quicker and get more fluid and with the trigger, you then start to get fade outs on the points. And that's how you can create like a dagger stroke. You get these nice fade outs on each side, but that comes in time. The more practice you do with this. So if you go that way on your lines, you can make your lines as wide as you want, and then you can bring start bringing your lines in. So when you get a smaller line, you're basically, you're rocking the brush like this, and that's really rocking that trigger backwards and forwards. So the smaller the line, so start off with two lines wide and then start bringing your lines in and in and in. So you get little small passes like that. And it's the same for this one here, but you're just doing it in a different direction. Same thing. It's rocking that trigger. I've run out of paint. But really good paint, as you see, it works for practicing Hobbycraft 50-50 mix on their acrylic. Job done in this brush. And it gets your painting guys cheap. So you're basically doing that in between the lines. Up and down, up and down, and practice these as much as you can. The speed will come in the end. If you're having to go really slow like this, doesn't matter. It's getting you that trigger control. It's just learning when to put the paint on, when to take it off. And you can do the same with it this way. You can have a bigger line. You can have a line here and one here and do a big line in between and then start bringing it down and down. So basically you are doing tiny little ones like that in between two lines. There you go, guys. That's the video finished today on the trigger control for the Nube. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something along the way. Keep it simple. You're not going to make it complicated. Don't stress. We all start somewhere. It's like riding a bike. You always fall off before you get better. And airbrushing is the same. You have to start off on these basic things. I know they're basic, but they hold you in good stead. And getting this trigger control down and then pinpointing your accuracy so you know exactly where you're going in and you know exactly where you're going to put that paint. It helps in the long run, guys. As I say, it's always good to go back to this. You've not got to make it expensive. You do not need to go out and buy expensive airbrush paint at this stage. You don't need fancy paper at this stage. You just need something cheap to get you started, guys. Paper, cheap, ruler, sharp air, pencil, cheap paint, job done, you're painting. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can join me in the next one. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe, press that notification, and give us a thumbs up, guys. It helps the channel grow, that's what it's about. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.